What is going on everyone? Welcome back to another team selection video. Game week 26 is almost over, so we're going to talk about how that is going so far, what Jan is expecting or even hoping from tonight's games. Then we're going to start looking ahead to game week 27. There is another double game week plus a load of other decisions to be made, including captaincy, uh, which I'm sure a lot of people are looking at Man City, but there are a couple of other um, good fixtures as well. So we're going to talk about all that. If you enjoy it, give it a like, hit subscribe. Jani, how you doing? I'm good. Yeah, I'm not too bad. I mean, I'm looking forward to this evening. There's there's loads on it. Um, the game week so far has been a little bit underwhelming, not just for me, but for many, I think. But yeah, all good. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, last night in particular was pretty poor. I think most clean sheets got wiped out. And obviously, a lot of people were hoping for Bruno Fernandes to do something, and he did nothing. Neither did Mayno. We shouldn't even talk about how bad that game was, because uh, yeah. it was truly awful. But tonight... Possibly bigger and better things to come with uh, Kane, Calvert Lewin, etc. So let's just jump straight into how how you're doing so far. So 79 with a four point hit. So just remind us what your uh, transfers were for this week. Yeah. Oh, good. Cool. Right. Okay. So Kane came in. Um, Bamford went out. DCL came in, and Ings went out. Um, so those two sales were good. Both those guys blanked. Bamford and Ings. Um, and then I, I took a four point hit to to swap uh, Ben Mee out. Bearing in mind, I already had Lowton and Burnley had some difficult fixtures. I just thought a four-point hit was worth it for an upgrade there. And I was between Pereira, Ainsley Maitland-Niles and Luke Shaw. And of course, I went Pereira with his two points over the double. Um, played him 90 in both games, really attacking. Played right mid and then right wing back. Could have had a few attacking returns, but got booked and conceded loads of goals whilst Luke Shaw got his 12 points. And hindsight... Luke Shaw was the right call there. Um, of course, United were going to keep a clean sheet against Palace. And then against Chelsea, that probably had nil-nil written all over it as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's fine. Um, and I hope, look, that decision wasn't just for this week. It's for the foreseeable. I need Leicester to get some men fit again. Good news that Fafana's returned. Um, and hopefully those Pereira clean sheets start coming, coming because they've got some lovely fixtures coming up, Leicester. And that was part of my thinking. Shaw had the better double, but Pereira had the better fixtures moving forward. Yeah, I think I think Luke Shaw was good for the double, but going forward, Pereira possibly better. But we're gonna have to see Leicester start performing a bit better than they have, like to concede to Burnley. Like, I think one clean sheet would have been fine. I think I, I think it would have been great if they got two. But Arsenal was always going to be tough. But to lose three one was uh, I don't think anyone really saw that coming. Not to lose by that margin, and then but conceding to Burnley as well so early. Um, yeah, and then and then Villa the same. I mean, again, I've got I've got Martinez right, so I've got one Villa defender as well. I feel like I was expecting a clean sheet against Sheffield United not against Leeds so probably shouldn't be too um, annoyed that it happened the other way around although once you already have the points you then think wow double clean sheets on here uh, and they couldn't even score against 10 men as well ridiculous yeah. game yeah yeah and going back to Martinez that first game against Leeds yes he got his incredible 10 or 11 points or 12 or whatever it was how Rafina didn't score in that game. Two big chances missed, including right at the end. That would have wiped out Martinez clean sheet, his bonus. And Rafina, I don't know how I've owned Rafina for the last few weeks. And yeah, he has had one goal, but he is performing like a £10 million asset and he still is. So I'm really excited about him moving forward. I hope people actually get fed up and sell him, but I'll definitely be looking to hold. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people will hold because of that... Um... That game week 29 match. And he has looked great. It'd be interesting to see what he does this week. Um, I think it's... Uh, we'll, we'll come on to that in a minute. But West Ham away is not necessarily that easy. But the way they play, I've got him as well. So I'm, I'm hoping for um, big things. Uh, yeah, elsewhere, really, obviously, we're going to have to wait and see um, what happens tonight. Because you've got triple Spurs. Obviously, got that Fulham game. So potential double clean sheet for Lloris. Uh, Son and Kane who looked good against Burnley and then also the Everton West Brom game you've got Calvert Lewin and Luca Dean plus Ariola on the bench as well um, so you're looking pretty good for tonight as long as as long as big things happen are you confident or are you worried after last night Fulham have been so good defensively in the last six to eight weeks but I st but Spurs have looked so good offensively in the last couple of weeks so I fully expect Kane to return Again, another another one of old oh, poor me, Kane. How uh, you'll feel this, Andy? Is I know you triple captain Kane. How he only scored one goal in in that in in Spurs' first game against Burnley. I don't know that big chance at the end. He missed. He tucks that away with his eyes closed. I know. I'm, I'm still annoyed about that. I, I don't care. I know everyone was saying, oh, but he got you six points, so he's got another game. I don't care. I wanted twelve points yeah. in another game. 
we like, always it, want more <laughs> yeah and, and and like you're right like he puts that away so often it was a son assist as well so yeah. it was just it was just worth so many points but look hopefully he gets something tonight i think if he can get to 15 points i'd be quite happy so if you can get one goal three bonus i would take that to be honest i think that's 15 total uh, i'd be all right with that obviously i want more um, i mean i'd take just one attack in return tonight i'd take five points no no, no, not good enough. I, I want nine at least. I want one goal, three bonus. That takes him to 15. With a triple captain, I'd be pretty happy with that. But we'll see. We'll see what happens tonight. We are doing um, Scoutcast match day tonight. Me, Gianni, and Toby, I think, right? So, yeah, yeah we'll be, I'll be watching that game for sure because I've got my triple captain on him. Uh, I'll be watching that in real time as well. So, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'll be getting excited if he gets uh, his goal. So, hopefully, get, loads of fun. Yeah, hopefully he gets it as early as he did in the Bernie game because that kind of settles the nerves a little bit once the return's off. Um, okay, we'll stop worrying about 26 for now. Let's have a look at game week 27. Um, so you're pretty nicely set up. Obviously, you've just bench boosted. So unsurprisingly, you have a pretty good bench. Um, so currently, you're benching Calvert-Lewin and Luca Dean. I think Luca Dean, I don't think anyone would um, really you know, question that move. Are you worried about benching Calvert-Lewin or do you think your boys Chelsea are just too good at the moment defensively? Do you know what? I'm actually slightly more worried about Luca Dean than DCL, I think. And there's a good reason why here. Okay, so Everton haven't been keeping clean sheets until last week at all, right? But I think they've five of their six clean sheets or something like that this season have come against the big six. Like Everton keep cleanos against the best teams. They just do. They're nil-nil games. So I look back to, was it the Merseyside derby a few weeks back? It was a nil-nil. And um, no, I think Everton won it. Did they, they win it? Didn't it was one-nil, won, won it? They got the they, penalty. They won it. Yeah, that was it. So DC, so Dean's been keep keeps cleanos against the good teams. Um, so I'm slightly worried because Chelsea don't, attack a huge amount um but i just can't bench any of the others andy and looking at the attacking ones okay if if i bent if dcl plays then do i really want to bench watkins with wolves at home no do i want to bench rafina i just don't he's passing the eye test and look there's a good chance that that Oh, no, there isn't a good chance. I was going to say that one of my City boys doesn't play, but of course, I forgot they've got the double. Of course, Foden and Gundogan will probably start one each. Um, Cancelo too. So, yeah, I'm a little bit worried about the Everton lads, both of them, in all fairness, but I can't see myself dropping Bruno. I mean, on paper, you put Bruno on the bench, don't you? You, you go, it's City away. You look at the fixture, you look at the form, and you play DCL over Bruno, but I can't. I can't not play Bruno. All it takes is that penalty out of nowhere, which he's done so often. Um, so yeah, I, I think I'm pretty sure that'll be my eleven. Yeah, I, I think with Calvert Lewin, like Chelsea defense at the moment is is almost as good as Man City. So I think you definitely play Fernandez because he's got penalties in his locker. I, I actually see blanks for both those players potentially, um, but you're always going to bank. Uh, bank on the one that's got the penalties as well and it's nothing to say we can't get anything against Man City just like Everton couldn't get something against Chelsea but I think both games are being tight it's just it's so much riskier to bench Fernandez than it is to um, bench Calvert-Lewin I would say a lot of people will do that this week I think with him uh, unless they, unless they haven't got very good benches so yeah I, I think you'll be okay there um, with, with the Man City boys uh, I mean Foden didn't start either of the games in the previous double did he which was a little bit surprising because you usually get at least one uh, but I guess potentially could start both of these. Are you worried about your City boys? Yeah, Fo I, I've no. If Foden had a single game week, Andy, I'd be selling him. And Foden was, to be fair, Foden was bought in on my wild card with the doubles in mind. They, I knew they had three doubles in like four weeks. So Foden was, and it, to be fair, it wasn't a bad punt. Last time out, I think he got eleven points. This time out, one point. Um, annoyingly, I dropped so Foden four stones. Uh, I went double attack, double defense, and of course, Stones went and got the goal. So this game week, that really punished me not owning Stones or Diaz. But look, Foden, I think we'll start one of the games. I don't. I think he could play in both. I think we think we could get a kind of a sixty and a thirty out of him. Um, but. I'm definitely selling Foden next week. That's 100% my move. Um, I'm not willing to take Foden into single game weeks. And that was never my strategy. Um, Gundogan, I think, could start both. I, I looked at City's fixtures. They've got the two Premier League games. Then they've got Fulham at the weekend, next weekend. And then they've got the Borussia Mitch and Gladbach game. They're, they're 2-0 up against Mitch and Gladbach. But Pep, we know, is massively going for the Champions League. The league's kind of wrapped up. I think he'll rest a few players in that Fulham fixture, which is three days before Bruce Simmons and Gladbach. He won't see that as a gimme at 2-0, even though it's, you know, the home, they're the home team at 2-0 up. So I think players like Gundogan could be resting the foot in the Fulham game, the really key men. 
and therefore I expect Gundogan to play against United and Southampton. That's how I'm seeing it. And look, second guessing Pep is impossible, but the likes of Cancelo and Gundogan, I expect to start twice. Um, and of course, they've both had a rest recently as well. Foden's a lottery. Who knows? KDB coming back doesn't help Foden either. Uh, Bilva's flying at the moment. Mares is flying at the moment. These guys performing really doesn't help Foden. So yeah, if I get one start, I'll, I'll be happy. If you get the Southampton game, that might be that that might be nice. I think Mares, I don't know how often he plays in the bigger games, but he has started like four or five in a row now. So yeah. you're right. With De Bruyne back, it's very difficult for Foden to play centrally. So he's competing with a lot of players for um, just two spots. But yeah, I mean, obviously you just you hold him for this one. The chances of him missing both of these games as well is almost zero, you'd imagine, because like you said, the the Champions League game's not until. Uh, another three Premier League games have been played. I think, yeah, I think with Gundogan, like, I'm, I own him as well. Uh, I think there's a chance. Yeah, I think I think most of the players like Gundogan, um, Cancelo, De Bruyne, etc., they're definitely going to start that Man United game. And he's not going to completely change the whole squad for Southampton. So, although <laughs> it could be more than half, that's for sure. Um, so, yeah, I think I think we'll have to see whether we can get. I, I think the problem with like the Wolves game was the way it went, they couldn't get that second goal early enough. So he had to keep playing the likes of De Bruyne for 90 minutes. Whereas if they can get an early lead against Southampton, I feel like he might start bringing people off. What do you think? Yeah, I looked at the fixes for the last month. I tweeted it as soon as the game finished against Wolves. I went back and looked at all the games City have played in the last 30 days in the Premier League. There was like seven or eight fixtures. From a possible 21 substitutes, Pep only used 11 of them. Like he it's crazy. Is- he wants these guys playing 90. Um, and I, th- I think it's so he can see that they can keep going in the 70th, 80th minute. So when the Champions League comes around or the, the, the big games, he knows that these guys can run and keep their performance levels up for 90. So I, th- I think that's why we're seeing it. Rather th- and So rather than rotating and resting players during games and going, you're having 60, you're having 30, he's going, no, you have 90. In the next game, you won't play at all. So he's, I think in half those games, he only made one sub. Um, which makes me think moving forward, if you've got a Gundogan or a Foden or whoever and or a Cancelo and they are benched, the fear of them coming on and getting one point at the end of the game is minimised now by looking at how Pep's using his subs. Um, so th- having a strong bench is key and the risk of them getting one point is minimised, which makes their assets a little bit more attractive if you're looking for kind of mid price punt like a Foden or a Gundogan. Um, but yeah, I mean... It's really interesting. It's just Pep being Pep. And who knows, that strategy could change tomorrow. Um, But for the double, I'm really hopeful that I get points from these guys because I I missed out on City in the last game week. So I didn't have Stones, didn't have Diaz. Foden got one point. Um, So I'm really hopeful that that Southampton fixture. And even United. I actually think the United game, for once, it's not going to be a nil-nil featuring United in the top team. I think City are going to have a right go. Yeah, I mean, they, they absolutely can. Like They will, uh, I wouldn't say necessarily walk all over us, but they've obviously got the players. And right now they're playing so well. Like we, we will struggle to get the ball off them, I would say. we know You know how Man United are going to set up. They're going to try and counter them with Rashford. If Martial's back, he'll be up front, etc. Um, but maybe he'll play Cavani. I don't know, actually. I, I think Cavani's been so good when he's played. But yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not massively looking forward to that game, it has to be said. I, I take it um, good and away captain is locked in for you. 100%. Like, I always like to back a double over a single player. Oh, look, you could go, look, Kane's got a great fixture or Son. Um, <clears throat> I just can't see past the fact that these guys have, have two bites at the cherry. And it, it's all about that for me. I lo- it just It's just almost playing the odds. And I, I feel like that Fulham fixture is where Gundogan will be rotated. Therefore, I'm willing to gamble on the armband. It's, it's Gundogan. If Gundogan wasn't in that team, I don't know if I'd be backing Cancelo. I might play safe with a cane. Um, but knowing I've got Gundogan, it has to be him. Knowing he's just had a rest. He's still get, getting forward. And yeah, I, I think the Fulham games is rest. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, are you looking to make any transfers this week? No, I'm not. I mean, I'm hoping for that double game week announcement for 28 where Aston Villa and and, um, and Everton get that, that, that double game week. And if they do, I've got money in the bank, 2.2 million, I think it is, to go Foden to Grealish and then still have some money banked. So the plan would be that for that double, I would have triple Villa and I'd have double Everton. And then Foden comes out, which I don't want the headache of Foden, quite frankly. So, um, yeah, Grealish will come in and hopefully he'll be back fit for that. And then, and then again, I'll be bringing in with the other transfer, just players that are playing in game week 29. I'm not free hitting in 29. I'll probably have eight or nine men. 
um, and I'm comfortable with that. Um, so yeah, looking forward, I'm I'm fairly well set, and I'm I'm still hoping, really, Andy, for a, a big green arrow t- tonight off the back of my seven performances, because uh, so far the highlight of my week has been has been getting that Napoli Argentina shirt behind me. Um, which I've been waiting three months for. I've got Maradona 10 on the back of that bad boy. Um, and I'm so excited about it. Um, but yeah, FPL has not been the highlight, which it was meant to be with all with the bench boost and all the, the uh, all the all the doublers in play. And like you said, you've got a lot of players tonight. So there's potential for big scores. I'm sure a few big green arrows as well. So fingers crossed on that. You, just really quickly on one thing you mentioned there was Foden out which is fair I, like, I don't think anyone's going to sit here and argue with you about um taking him out eventually anyway uh you'd only have two city players then would you be in a rush to get a third for the time being no if pep keeps rotating as he is i'm happy with two that start more than most and just going with a double um the guy i've of course like everyone i have my eye on is kdb um and, and there's an opportunity to go Son to KDB or even Grealish I have short term and then upgrade him to KDB at some point I'll need to take some money out my bench so I'm, I'm I could go my third forward down to a Brewster and save cash um I've got Loughton who I'll have on my bench all season now but I don't really want to have to have a DCL or a Dean on my bench or a Pereira or a Target that regularly so um, the plan was it would be Loughton and Target mostly on the bench and then one other but because my eighth attacker is Rafina, who I want to play most of the time I might downgrade one of those forwards down to Brewster and then and then yeah boost some money so, so Grealish can become KDB for example. Yeah, I think I think a lot of people. I, I think a lot of people were starting to look towards De Bruyne until he started against Wolves. I think that's kind of put people off a little bit. I mean, one of the key things that's going around at the moment, like you already don't have Salah. Have you got mm-hmm. any inclination to sell Fernandez? That suddenly, especially after last night, obviously people are knee jerking now and and starting to look at the fixtures. Well, actually, do we need him because he's blanked against Crystal Palace? What's, what's your thoughts around him? It's a tough one because when I dropped Salah. Three weeks ago, I was it was six or one half dozen the other. It was do I drop Salah or Bruno? I knew I didn't want both, uh, and quite frankly, I wanted neither. But I was scared of going without them both. Um, so at the moment, I'm I'm sticking with Bruno. I'm not going to make the switch to Salah because of the fixtures. Neither of them play in 29. And off the back of that, I could go Bruno to Salah. But the plan was always to get Salah back was using Son. I didn't want Kane and Son long term unless they were banging and actually maybe they will be banging Son looks like he's back um but yeah I, I saw my route back to Salah as Son but maybe it becomes a switch cross to Bruno because yeah of course looking at his fixtures City West Ham no fixture then it's Brighton in 30 and we'll probably captain him for that um but then you know it, it's it's not the easiest of runs Spurs Burnley Leeds Liverpool Villa Leicester you know then none of these games are gimmies I do think if United drop a few more points though and they go in for top four as Liverpool will be of course then you know there's a lot of must-win games come the end of the season where you want the likes of Bruno and Salah you want to have players from teams that have got a lo- load of stuff to play for which is why double city is probably going to be okay um so yeah, what are your what's your thoughts, Andy, as a United fan on Bruno? Would you? I mean, you've got Bruno and Salah at the moment, I guess. Yeah, I'm thinking of selling him, but that's mostly just to get De Bruyne and just take a punt on him over Fernandez. Like, it's not that I think Fernandez is bad or anything like that. I just when I look at the fixtures and I think about who I'm going to captain, um, he he is not on my radar until game week 33 against Leeds and in that week I'm probably going to free hit anyway so uh, I can easily get him straight back in like in game week 30 Brian at home looks good but Kane's got Newcastle um, so he's currently where I'm thinking about putting my captain it, it'll still be a bit of a risk because I'm sure Fernandes will still be over 100% uh, and I think in game week 32 when he's got Burnley there's someone else who's got a good fixture that week I, I've had a look at it I put a tweet out about it um, yeah the week that he has Burnley Salah has Leeds so yeah, there's for me. It's there's only uh, leads are being targeted quite a bit over the next few weeks for me. Uh, they've got some yeah. tough fixtures in a row. They've got um, uh, who is it? They got Man City, so Kevin De Bruyne. Now they got Liverpool, so Salah, and then they got Man United, so Bruno Fernandes back in on the free hit. So Leeds, uh, as long as they keep giving up chances, I think from 31 to 33, my three captains will be from them. So I'm thinking about. I think obviously there's always risk with selling. Like he is the top scoring player in the game, right? And he hasn't done that by fluke. Like we can talk about all the penalties, but uh, if you go and look at his non-penalty goals, he's right up there with most of the other um, kind of top midfielders anyway. Um, so yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with keeping him. I don't think, but. 
I think there's something that you've got trousers already in mind. So it's a bit different. Like I, I wouldn't tell anyone to like force him out. If you've got a different move to make, the Bruno Fernandez is not top of your priority list. Um, but if you haven't, then Man City, West Ham, blank. That's uh, oh my mic's gone. I hope that wasn't too loud. Um, it's potentially a, a good time to do something a little bit more interesting. That's that's all my thoughts. Are. I I don't. Not, you know what I mean? I'm not looking at my team saying, why have I still got Fernandez? Like, he needs to go. It's not like that at all. Uh, and like you said, you've already got... Like, rolling a transfer this week is probably a good idea because if that double gets announced, although you're pretty set up for that double already, like four players, um, then yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, that double was a big part of the thinking even on my wildcard because I knew I wanted Everton and Villa players anyway because of the doubles they had in 26. So to to be able to have five of them going into 28 will be great. Um, and, and Grealish is someone I quite wanted to bring back anyway. I love having Grealish and Watkins as a double up because if Watkins scores, it's usually off a Grealish assist or sorry, vice versa. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, uh, yeah, I'm quite excited. I mean, Liverpool obviously have Fulham this week, which is a little bit scary. But at the same time, as I said at the start of the show, like Fulham have been much better defensively, um, and and Liverpool still look a little bit short somewhere. They just haven't clicked. And I know Salah could have scored late on in in the double, but again, I, I was watching, thinking this just isn't a vintage Liverpool team. Yeah, yeah. Salah's off the boil. Yeah, I think they're waiting for Joss to come back, aren't they? Once he comes back, maybe that will kind of spur them all into action. Yeah. I think once he's fit, he's going to be back in. And I, I could see them playing four attackers quite a lot because it, they just, I don't know, it's just not working for them right now. I think they're doing fine, but Liverpool are better than fine, you know? So can they find that kind of fifth gear again? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, yeah, I think, I think we'll leave it there unless there's anything else you wanted to add. No, I mean, the Jota coming back, I forgot to mention when you asked me about Salah, Jota coming back could play a part there. I don't think you can ever cover Salah's points that you can't really cover a player like Salah or Bruno, but having that attack, that that half price attacker in the same lineup, someone like Jota, he could be my route to not having Salah um, from 30 and beyond. I yeah, ha- yeah. Happy in March that. Yeah, I don't think that's even like a cover thing. I think he, in in his own right, for his yeah. price, he is just a good option. Like it doesn't. If you want to go about Salah, but get Jota, that's fine. I don't think it's even yeah. about covering points really. So yeah, I like that. Good stuff. Uh, give it a like if you've enjoyed it, and hit subscribe for new around here. Obviously, like we said earlier, we'll have the match cast tonight, so make sure to check that out. That'll go live around ten to six, and then um, at six o'clock, we've got the Everton game and the Spurs game on at the same time. So make sure you tune in for that. Uh, and obviously, we'll be back next week to find out how game week twenty so double game week twenty. Went. so Johnny, thank you for uh, joining me thank you mate look forward to uh, seeing you tonight and then also i'm doing the manchester derby on sunday for another watch along so do join in for that on the, on the big 4 30 sunday game good stuff lots to come make sure you hit that subscribe button hit the like button on this video and we'll catch you soon